Oopsie Daisy Dress Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi everybody! In today's video I am going to show you a tutorial for how I enhanced this dress which started out just plain yellow. So I sewed on all these little flowers and embellishments and I painted the daisies on it and then I wrote oopsie daisy. So this whole thing was like I said just yellow and I made it a little bit more interesting. I hope you guys like this as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to begin with, I'm going to mix my fabric paint. So it's one part glycerin, one part water, and two parts paint. Mind you, I don't measure anything. It's all kind of a estimation. That's just kind of the base mix that you want to go with. The more paint that you have in your mix, the better the opacity is going to be. The more glycerin water that you have in the mix, the better the flexibility and the softness will be. So you have to kind of know what you're going for and mix it according to the end result that you want. So now I'm going to, I just lined the dress with a plastic bag. I kind of pinned that in place so that the bag wouldn't move on me while I was painting because if that happens and the paint soaks through to the other side, you're gonna have some bleeding from one side of the fabric to the other. But then I'm going to paint my daisies on here. And the first one, for whatever reason that I'm painting right now, had seven petals, which is just goofy. And the rest of them all had six. These are the things that I usually try not to say like I don't try to point out my mistakes, but then as I'm watching them, I can't help myself. So anyways, the first one had seven petals. Don't ask me why, I just did. The rest of them all had six. I would recommend going with a six petal flower just because it seems to be easier to paint and just look better. It's okay though. I painted over the top of that one with Oopsie Daisy, which is kind of, I guess, logical. Put Oopsie Daisy on top of your Oopsie Daisy. So there you go. It all makes sense now. Anyways, with the white paint and this color of, so the mix that I did, like I went back to in the beginning where I said that depending on how much paint you have and your ratios will make a difference, it actually dried not nearly as white as it looks in the beginning. So it's more of like a pale yellow to yellow contrast instead of a white and yellow. So, so you know, you have to keep it in mind. The reason that I went with a more watered down paint instead of one that had more of the paint in it, is because the material that I am painting on top of is very, very soft. It's also very thin. So if you had more paint in it, and just the, the texture of it, I knew that it would try to repel my paint. There's some colors, and there's some um, materials that are just like, you wanna put paint on me? Ha ha, you're kidding. And this is the one that seemed to be feeling that way. So if you have more water in it, the better it will absorb your paint. And so I decided that that was worth it to me. Plus, the material is really soft, so I wanted the paint to be really soft because if it isn't, it might have stretched weird and it might decide to crack or all of those things. And all these things you have to keep in mind and consider. So, you know, there's just all of these little things that run through your head. And the more that you paint things that are fabric that you're planning on wearing, the more you will get to just secondhand know exactly how to mix your paint. In the beginning, if you want to do maybe like a patch test so maybe paint just one flower that's under the arm or somewhere that's not going to be seen as much until you can kind of get a feel for your paint mixture that might be a good idea so after you have your whole dress covered in daisies you're gonna to have to do it in batches so you can paint the sides and the back i'm going to fill in the center of the flowers with a marigold color this one is just like a really pretty coppery orange color same thing that nice little mix but because you're painting on top of something that already has paint down it's going to pick up the pigment way better if you wanted it to be more pigmented your flowers you could have done a second coat on them but the same thing the more paint you put on top just it's going to get a little bit more crispy feeling and then inside the marigold color I put on I'm a little bit of metallic gold circle so I have these different layers built up and they kind of look like little buttons to me which I think is really pretty plus that metallic gold color that I'm using is absolutely gorgeous I love that color I use it for almost everything that I can I'm like can I put gold on this yes I can and then I use it which you know we each have our own preferences, but then with some masking tape, I just kind of eyeballed two lines across the front of the dress, and I put those down. The masking tape is a really good way to have sort of a base of a baseline for your writing without doing anything permanent, because it comes off, it peels off the paint, there's no residue left over, and it just works really well. So I use masking tape for all sorts of things as well. But then I have my black paint, and the black paint I put a little bit heavier on the paint versus the water and glycerin just so that I get really nice, sharp, clean black lines. And it's a little bit more spaced out, little thin lines, so the stretching wasn't going to be as detrimental as it would with the daisies that are covering 90% of the bodice of the dress. So I started with the P in the center, and then I S-I-E at the end. And you can choose any font you like, any uh, writing style that you like to use. I always go for really girly fonts. It's just 
I don't know, like, I guess it's just because I'm really girly, but I really like this kind of a swooping thing, especially for Oopsie Daisy. It just seems like it has sort of a carefree, a carefree essence to it, which is what Oopsie Daisy makes me think of. It makes me think of, I don't know, Marilyn Monroe, kind of. I have weird things that I correlate in my brain, but I absolutely love the saying Oopsie Daisy. I say it all the time, and so it just seemed appropriate to have a dress that said it. And as soon as I finished this dress, I showed my husband and he just cracked up and he's like, yep, that looks about right. That looks like you. I'm like, see, that's exactly what you go for when you're painting something for yourself to personalize. You want people to look at it and say, yeah, that, that fits you. So then after I have the oopsie written on there, I'm going to, on the second line, write Daisy. And so I'm going to begin with the eye in the center. So figure out, count your letters, depending on, it doesn't matter what phrase you're painting, count how many letters it is and then find the center letter. So for Daisy, there's five letters, D-I-D-A-I-S-Y, so the I is the center, so paint that in the center. But the other thing you have to consider is that the D is going to be a larger letter because it's a capital letter, whereas all the others are lowercase, and the I is a very small letter. And so you want to put the I just off center so that you allow more room for your D with things still staying nice and symmetrical and even side to side. So it doesn't look like the D is sort of tipping your whole thing off balance. And the other thing really quickly that I would like to mention is that when you have the masking tape down for letters like the P and the Y in this phrase, you obviously cannot paint the tail of the letter because there's masking tape in the way. So just paint down to that space and then after you are done with the rest of it and you can take off your masking tape, peel the masking tape off, you can do that as soon as you're done. You don't have to wait for the paint to dry or anything. So just peel off your masking tape and then add the tail to the letter. And I know that I've seen some people where they've masked stuff off and they've like peeled away some of the masking tape to allow for the tail. That's just a lot of extra work. You don't have to worry about that. Just do it later. And depending on the kind of paint you're using, depending on the project, not in this circumstance, but sometimes it does matter that you want to continue the wet paint line going through. But for this, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So here's the D of my daisy with a little curly cue coming off of the end of it just like so and I would recommend using a brush that's a nice round brush with a really clean crisp point on it that's going to give you the wonderful range to make your letters that have kind of a calligraphy type of a look to them peel off your masking tape touch up any of the letters that need it and then add the tail to your Y on my particular dress it has a little bit of gathering around the waist so I have to kind of cut the tail to my Y short so it doesn't get all caught up in the gathering but then I'm going to take and I have two kinds of trim I have a black flower trim and then little white flowers little white daisies and I'm going to pin all of them in place so I kind of stacked them up made a little bit of a layer and then I counted how many across the front I thought I would need and pin them down so that they're not going to wiggle around on you and then start sewing them into place and I don't know if anybody remembers this but on occasion I remember that I say that I, I'm pretty good with anything craftsy like I consider myself you know I can do most things but I don't like to sew and I don't I hate sewing so the fact that I took the time to actually sew these flowers on should say a lot to anybody who's watching this because I, I hate to sew. The one good thing is that I actually made this dress a while ago and I was watching the ACM awards while I was doing it and that made the whole thing worthwhile because I don't know, Reba McIntyre was hosting it and that just makes my heart happy. But just continue sewing on all your flowers. That part was definitely the most tedious element of this dress. My thumbs were so sore by the end of it and yeah, but if you want to do it and you want to actually, you know, continue on the same path as I did, sew on the little flowers because it makes it look so much better. It just completes the whole thing. And then after I had those sewed on, I had more of my little white flowers. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take these and I'm going to sew them here and there around the front of the dress. Why not? I already covered in little pin pricks. Why not add a couple extras? So I took, and I think I had seven of these little flower trims that I went and I put them around the top here and there and that was it. I made myself a headband to go with it and I made one for my daughter who will not wear it but that's such is life. Hopefully she will come around to my side of things eventually at least in the hair hair decoration department. But I hope you guys like this and check out my Facebook and Instagram to see more of my art and I will see you in my next video. Bye!